Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to be here, standing in front of you to talk about log management. And today, I would like to tell you a story. The story of what we call logging without limits. A bit more than one year ago, when Datadog announced the release of a log management solution, the goal was not only to provide a tool to centralize and easily search your logs, but also to correlate them with metrics and traces. And this correlation is key, because if you have to wake up at four in the morning because the prod is burning, the question is, how can we make it as fast and as easy as possible for you to drill down to the source of the problem, fix it, and go back to bed? And we believe that being always one click away from either taking a step back and getting a higher view of what's happening, or to deep dive into the most granular information is the best way to help you as metrics, logs, and traces usually show different angles of the same problem. So today, we can say that Datalog is not one infrastructure product, one APM product, one log product, but one platform where everything is linked together. That said, let's get back to log management. One question that we've heard a lot was, we have too many logs, and most of them are almost never used, but we must keep them in case we need them one day. However, it costs too much to store them all, so what can I do? So the first question to answer here is, if there are too many logs, which one should I keep? And at Datadog, we have a feature called Patterns that helps you to quickly identify trends through a huge volume of logs. And it does not require any setup. Like, for instance, if we look at this service, instead of looking at millions of individual error logs, we can narrow it down to seven uh, individual patterns, and we see immediately what's happening. And in this case, it's very helpful because I can quickly identify the source of the problem, which might not be the most occurring and spammy error at the top, but the one at the bottom, which could be hidden in the flow. And another way to leverage those patterns is to identify which logs are critical and which are not. If we look at this other service that represents a web server, we can see at the top that 40% of the logs generated are 200 response code. They are telling me that everything went fine. So are those critical to monitor my web server? No. So let's remove them. Usually, the first suggested solution to remove logs is to not generate them at all in the first place. So you would ask developers to only log what's critical. But we know that takes a lot of time, and it's almost never the priority compared to building new features or fixing issues that are impacting your users. So another solution is to filter logs before they are sent to your log management solution. But this means that logs are dropped, so you're losing visibility. And if you ever need them in the future, you need to update the filtering rules and redeploy the collectors on your infrastructure, which is not something you want to do during an incident. Or we were thinking, what if Datadog could do it for you? And well, we can, thanks to logging without limits, which decouples ingested and indexed logs from a technical and cost perspective, which is key to let you send everything with no server-side filtering, see all the logs in real time in the live tail, thanks to exclusion filters to dynamically keep control on your indexing cost by retaining only what you need, depending on situations, while storing everything into your long-term storage that we call archives. So you have visibility over all of your logs in real time, and you can choose to index only what's valuable for you. And let's see how we can exclude logs in Datadog with a concrete example, like those 200 response codes that were telling us that everything went fine. Here we keep 5% of them to still have trends, and you can be even more specific by excluding only the one that have a response time below a given value, here below one second. So overall, you might want to exclude logs that tells you that everything went fine and keeps the ones that are key for troubleshooting issues. And indeed, requests that are well and quickly handled are likely not critical compared to errors, which have a direct impact on your user experience on your product. And as what is critical for you might change, you can edit, enable, or disable them at any time. And 
uh, yeah, you can edit, enable them or disable them at any time, and all of this in one central place. Datadog, so no need to redeploy anything on your infrastructure. And a good example for this would be to exclude debug logs, because, well, you don't need them on a daily basis. But you can disable the exclusion filter during an outage, leverage the logs in the log explorer, and enable it back when the problem is solved. And remember, it's not because the logs have been excluded that they are not useful. They are still available in the live tail and sent to the archives. So they are not lost. So we, only, we now only have the logs that are necessary to troubleshoot issues, but we did lose something here. Now that some logs are excluded, how can I get accurate long-term trends? Here we kept only 5% of the 200 response code with response time below one second. So how can I, we know how many requests were made overall? But to find a solution for this, we need to leverage all the logs, indexed or not. And this is key to extract accurate KPIs from our logs. So when stated that way, we realized that to generate those KPIs, what we needed was a way to generate metrics at ingest level. And let's see how that works. In the logs menu, you'll find a generate metrics tab. You enter your query, the engine logs here. Then you define what you want to summarize, a C point count split by status code. I name this metric, I save it, and Datadog is now maintaining this KPI for 15 months. And not only do I have the overall number of requests that were made, but also a breakdown by status code. So you'll be able to use machine learning, forecasting, and anomaly detection algorithms that are available with metrics. But we are still forgetting something here. Even if we now have KPIs for 15 months, what if a user experienced an issue several months ago but complains now to my support team? If the logs are no longer in Datadog, what we do know is that archives contains all the logs that have been sent. So we need a way to leverage those archives so they are not just a pile of dusty logs that no one looks at. So what is required here is the ability to get the logs from the archives for a very specific query over a given time frame. We want the logs for that user on the day the issue occurred, not any other. And we call that feature log rehydration. Like here, we are searching for Nginx logs for a given user ID around June 6, but the logs are no longer in Datadog. But they are in the archives, so we simply click here, and we get the rehydration that is automatically pre-filled with my query and time frame. In this case, this job will scan my prod archive on the provided time frame and reload only the logs that are matching this query. And we are not talking about hours here, but minutes and most of the time even less than a minute to get the logs back from the archives. Once the logs are reloaded, they are stored in what we call the historical view, and those stay there until you don't need them anymore. So thanks to logging without limits, we believe that the initial question is answered, and there is no such thing as having too many logs. With Datadog, you can now send everything and safely index only what is truly critical for your daily operations, while knowing that you have long-term KPIs from all your ingested logs, and, as a safe net, the ability to get the logs back from the archives. Now, I know this was a lot of screenshots, so feel free to come at the Logs Workshop right after to see all of this in action. Thank you.